Cassidy Sparks. I'm the product manager for Mugrugs Volume 6, and we're excited to do a Mugrug tutorial for you. The one we're featuring today is camping themed. It's called Mountains. It has a really fun saying. It says, the mountains are calling and I must go. So let's get to it. To start out, we want to prepare our fabrics. As you can see, you want to have fusible backing on piece one, piece two, and mountains one fabric and mountains two fabric. So we've prepared those pieces so they're ready to go. It just makes sure that nothing is see-through and that those materials hold and keep their form really nice as we're creating our stitch out. And also for your finished product, so it makes it less floppy. So to start off, we want to prepare our hoop. We want to use medium cutaway stabilizer. Then we're going to sew in a placement line. As we're doing this, um, I am going to be using a navy blue just so it's visible on the camera. We've completed step one for a batting placement line. I'm going to place my batting down. Luckily, batting isn't too slippery, but I'm going to tape it down just to be safe around all edges. And when I tape, I try to allow space so that I'm not sewing over my tape. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Just peel, those, peel the tape out carefully so you don't rip your stitching. Like so. All right, we're gonna put it in for machine step two. So as you can see here, I did end up catching just that small corner of my tape. When I peel that, I'm just gonna go really slow. Make sure I'm not throwing off the tension of the thread underneath, luckily, this has been reinforced. The machine went around twice. But just be careful as you're peeling that tape so it's out of the way. Okay, we're going to trim around the perimeter of this batting. When I trim, I like to get really close. And one trick I use is I kind of pull the material as I trim, just moving it out of the way and letting my scissors do the work. really close, but you don't want to clip your stitching. If you do, it's it's not the end of the world, but try to allow a little bit of space there. So now that we have these sections down and we've trimmed the batting, we're going to place piece one of the fabric. And remember, we're going to place piece one right side up, facing up, so the pattern is what we're seeing. And remember, piece one is directional fabric. The instructions tell us to cut around the long edge of the fabric so that the pattern is aligned with the long edge of the fabric. So you're going to place this down and I like to kind of align it with the seam so that we can make sure those lines look nice and straight and pretty on our final mug rug. Just make sure it's overlapping from section one to section two so that you get clearance over that seam. All right, so as you can see, we've done that first trimming placement line over the fabric, and luckily my pattern aligns really nicely here. This excess that we have, we're just going to trim away real quick. So I'm gonna place my hoop so I can reach that a little bit better. And I am just trimming pretty close to that line. 
All right, we're ready to place piece two over section two. So piece two is gonna be a little bit different. You can see I prepared it. I've got my fusible backing on the back, but we are going to line it up over section one like this, creating a seam right here. And we're going to tape that down so it doesn't wiggle. And we're gonna move to machine step four to create that seam for our mug rug. Now that we have that seam sewn, gonna remove the tape. And you'll see I have a little bit of excess here like I did before. If that's bothering you, you can trim it, but it shouldn't add too much bulk to that seam. If you just want to fold it over, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to press it or you can also finger press it. I'm gonna do for this tutorial real quick. Just make sure it's really tight on that seam. Okay, now that I've pressed this, I'm going to tape down my edges so that it doesn't move under the machine. That's always the worst when that happens. And as you can see in the instructions, it asks that you kind of tape the corners so you just stay away out of that stitch line. I'm gonna actually move this tape so it's a little bit more out of the way. We should be good to go. Now that we have our mug rug tapped down with that border that you can see here, we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna do the background quilting. That's gonna be mis machine step six. And that is gonna be done in linen. So I'm gonna switch out the thread. Okay, we use linen here. You can use a white quilting thread or you can have fun with it, play around. I love the quilting at Kimberbell. We have so many fun creative, beautiful designs. I don't know about you, but I love watching the quilting as it goes through my machine, watching it all, the design just kind of flow into place. And this one's really pretty. It's got waves and trees. You'll see it as we stitch it out. Isn't this quilting so pretty? I love that it features all these different kinds of pine trees. It just really is giving a woodsy feel. So I forgot to peel my tape back before when we did the border of our mug rug. I'm gonna do that now. The next step that we're going to do is we're gonna do our mountain placement lines. And for this step, it is not going to be in a visible thread color, but I am going to move forward. The next thread color change we're going to do is in a green. So I'm going to jump ahead, use that green for those placement lines because they won't matter in the final product. You won't be able to see them when we're done with all of our trimming and all of our applique. Okay, so I'm on machine step, step seven. We're going to do those mountain placement lines.
Okay, so now that we have those mountains one placement lines, I'm going to place my mountains one fabric. And as you can see, I've got my fusible backing on the back. That's just gonna make sure that as we're going over this crease, it doesn't show up as much. Our fabric is just gonna hold its own a little bit better by having that fusible backing on there. And I'm going to tape it down. I'm gonna make sure as I'm placing this that I'm just covering all of those placement lines really well. All right, moving to machine step eight. Okay. So as you can see, I've got that tacked down. I'm gonna remove my tape and I'm going to trim as close as possible to these lines. The edges that are visible that aren't gonna be covered by other applique are going to have a satin stitch that goes over top. So we wanna make sure we give that satin stitch enough room and enough clearance to go over the fabric. I don't know if you guys have experienced the, this, but it's really frustrating when you're doing a st satin stitch and you get all sorts of frays or fabric caught in it and it looks chunky and not smooth. So just cutting close will always fix that problem from happening before it starts. I also, if I have like really close things, I love to pull out my smaller shears. I worked on the testing floor of Kimberbell for some time. We used to joke that we were all surgeons with all of our cutting tools. See these shears are helping me get really close to that tight curved edge. Just peeling that fabric back as I cut. Especially right in here where you've got the fabric tacked down and it's really tight. These are gonna be your friend. And I kind of like to trim one piece at a time that's tacked down. So we've got that final piece that needs some room. Just really almost aggressively pulling that fabric away as I cut. Okay, now that I have this all trimmed, we are ready for machine step nine. We're gonna go in and this is gonna look a little chunky. You're gonna see a satin stitch here and a satin stitch there. We're just putting satin stitches over the fabric, the edges of the fabric that are gonna be visible in the final product. So once we apply our other pieces, it's gonna make a little bit more sense why satin stitches are happening in certain places and not others. Okay, I've got my satin stitches down. I'm going to leave this project in the hoop and I'm going to do the next machine step that's gonna put the other placement lines for the other edges of our mountains, kind of fill in this negative space we have here. Awesome. 
Okay, so we've got those placement lines down for our Mountain 2 fabric. You can see it's starting to look more like mountains, not weird, I don't know, curvy things. <laughs> We're gonna place down our Mountains 2 fabric, also prepared with fusible backing. And we're going to tape it down. You can kind of see the routine here. This is a really good project. Mugrugs are perfect project to learn how to use an embroidery machine for. In fact, on the testing floor, when we train our staff, we have them make a mug rug. It's their first project. It's fun to see all these strange shapes come together and make mountains. So as you can see, the machine's going over and it's gonna go over that shape twice as it's applying the applique. If you see the machine just pass over once, that's a good indicator that you're on the wrong step. You're probably putting a placement line rather than a tack down line on. It might be hard to see, but I've got my placement lines down, a Mountain 2 fabric. I'm gonna remove my tape and we're gonna trim this, this one as well. Again, just using those smaller shears to kind of get in that narrow area where it's tacked in two places. Everyone's scissors and hands are shaped differently, so do what, do what works best for you. That's just my personal preference. All right, it's starting to look like mountains. You can see the two different slopes going on, kind of north and south facing slopes. Grew up in a ski family and I love the vibes this has. It reminds me of a summer ski resort. Okay, so I'm not gonna remove my hoop from the machine, but you can see machine step 13 made some of those satin stitches from step nine make a lot more sense. Kind of brought those mountains together with all these stitches and it looks like they're all just, they're all flowing together nicely. You can see here that we've still got a few patches without satin stitches. That's where our pine trees are going to go. I'm going to switch the thread out to a dark brown to make those dark wood fills. This is kind of our darker color to add some value and detail to that wood that we're going to add, the firewood. Okay, now that we have that shading for the branches and for the trunks, we're gonna keep this in the, the hoop in the machine and we're going to put a lighter wood down to finish off the rest of those brown tree trunks and firewood.
I'm going to switch out that thread again, and we're going to return to our green color. Okay, I'm going to do those tree placement lines, machine step 15. Okay, so we're going to place the pine tree fabric over. Make sure you're covering those pine trees. Those tree tops will get you if you're not paying close attention. I love this fabric choice. It reminds me a lot of pine needles. It's got fun texture to it. Okay, we're going to remove our project from the machine. Remove the tape and trim away. Now it's good when you're trimming to keep in mind what kind of stitch is gonna be going over top of what you're trimming. Um, this is going to have a decorative stitch that goes over top of it. So little straggly things like this, it's always good to get them out of the way, but threads, just make sure you trim them tightly. Decorative stitches hide a lot, but they also show a lot. As your fabric is fraying and stuff, if you have any stray threads, you, you're more likely to see them with a decorative stitch than a wide satin stitch sometimes because you can kind of see the raw edge peeking out from under it. Just for these short, narrow clips, I'm gonna use my clippers rather than my larger scissors. There's lots of different ways you can go about trimming this. I know some people who like to go and just do their vertical lines or diagonal lines and then do their horizontal lines like that. I kind of like going zigzaggy. And sometimes it's nice just to allow you some wiggle room to trim and separate those fabrics. So you have more room you're not tacked down in multiple places as you're trimming. All right, now that I've trimmed that away, you can kind of see it's not perfect. This isn't raw edge. So if you're a little fuzzy on these lines, that's okay. Our decorative stitch will go in and Clean that up nicely. Okay. So there's our decorative stitch. I love how it adds some visual texture just with that, you know, zigzaggy decorative stitch and the lines. It looks like a pine tree. It's really cute. So just as we're talking about that decorative stitch, if you've got some flyaways you're not a big fan of, we offer these Kimberbell tweezers that are needle nose. They can kind of get in there and clean it up really nicely. You can even Kind of go in with your snips and use your your tweezers to get in there really close. 
now we're going to do our fire placement line. We're just on our last few steps for that background camping scene. And we're going to place our fire fabric here. Kind of a tiny little piece. So now that we've placed that fire fabric, we're also going to place mylar over the top of it. And when we're kind of double layering things like this, my my rule of thumb is you can't do too much tape. You can always do too little. So I kind of layered the first layer on really well with tape and now I'm going to go over the top with tape again. In the instructions it does say that you you want to lay you want to tape it twice. Okay. All of that tape, we're going to put it in for machine step 19. And mylar, mylar can be really slippery. That's part of why I stressed taping earlier. But one thing that's nice about it is all that talk about trimming. With mylar, you don't have to worry about that so much. After I get the tape off, I'll show you. With mylar, you can really just tear it away. as seen and it it trims perfectly just naturally the way it tears if you want to go in and kind of get it more finished you definitely can I'm using my tweezers for that just because of how narrow that space is and there we are okay I'm going to remove the tape from the underlying fabric for the fire, we're going to trim that as well. We're going to um, stitch the flame decorative mesh that goes around the mylar and kind of secures it a little bit better. Beautiful. You can kind of see how that went over, but you can still see the mylar shining through, giving it a flames look. I'm going to switch the thread and we're going to put some yellow details in as well. Okay. Now that I've got my flame details and I must go, I'm just going to trim those tails in between. You can also do this at the end of the project. I'm going to save some of it for later. Okay, we've got one more saying to go and we'll be done with the front details of our mug rug. Okay, now we have the mountains are calling and I must go. The whole scene is ready to go. What I love about these mug rugs is if you don't want to make a mug rug, here's your stopping point. You can just stop here. You can cut it out. It makes a nice quilting block. You can frame it. It's a beautiful design, but we're going to turn this one into a mug rug. So we pre-prepared these two fabric pieces so that they are creased and fold it in half. We want to put the folded side over the top of the mug rug and we're going to put the other folded side overlapping over that.
so that we have a finished edge here. Now we're gonna have that overlap about one inch right here. If you measured it out, it should naturally happen. And if you want it to be a little bit less, you can also go a little bit less by pushing it out, but that inch clearance is about perfect. And we're going to tape this down. It's important that you tape down this fold right here. If you don't, you're gonna be in big trouble later. Your machine's gonna go over and it's gonna catch and you're gonna have some, you're gonna have some unpicking to do. I'm also just going to tape down these corners, keeping these sides secure. And our machine is going to pass over this tape, but you'd much rather have it pass over the tape and gently tear away the tape then have your fabric puckering under your machine and a lot of, yeah, have things not go smoothly. Okay, we're gonna remove the hoop, finished embroidering. We're gonna tear away that tape very carefully you can use your thumb to kind of press down where the stitch is and it kind of helps that tear away evenly. You can also use your scissors to kind of cut away at that tape as well. Okay, now we're gonna remove our project from the hoop. So we're gonna trim around this perimeter leaving about a quarter of an inch around the trim line. I don't have my big cutting shears, but these Kimberbell ones do the trick. Okay, and then we're going to, I like to trim down my corners just so when I turn it inside out, it'll fold in nicely. And your fabric won't pucker as much over there. We're gonna have the final reveal by just turning it inside out. And if you have a pencil or some good scissors, you can always kind of poke in those corners and iron it flat. Oh, we've actually got a tool for that here. You can poke, the, poke in those corners. Get them nice and pointy rather than rounded. And then I would definitely recommend going over it with your iron just to make sure, get rid of some of the wrinkling and make sure it lays nice and flat and beautiful. But, but there's your finished project. Thanks for joining us for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can follow us for all of our content. Thanks again.